Hey y'all. So what I'm working on right now is um, I'm gonna pull this uh, wet kit PTO drive out. Um, down bottom, I've only got one one nut on the bottom of one of these. It's missing two over here. It's got two there. I don't know if these are threaded into something or what. I've only got one one nut down below. I've got four air lines going through the floor, plastic lines, which I'm probably going to cut in one light, which isn't connected to anything. Not here anyways. So we'll probably just cut the air lines. I'm going to have to cap them anyways and find out real quick what these are going to. One of them has a nut on the bottom and I got a little bitty pair of ice grips on it. I think it's this one. It's coming. Excuse the mower noise. My wife's out mowing. Didn't need it, but she likes to mow. So I like to let her. Because I hate mowing. Growing up, I did all the mowing I wanted to do. Just for extra money. Or, or money period I should say we was poor we didn't have no money for nothing so if I wanted money I had to go make it which meant in the summertime I was out wearing out my dad's lawnmowers which were wore out to begin with and I'd buy my own gas and uh, mow all summer for whoever would let me I remember this one yard I had to do was uh, pretty freaking big, probably an acre, I would guess, and the, these people who live there would let it grow up about 10 inches tall before they'd let me mow it, and they'd pay me 20 bucks to mow this big old yard with a push mower, and uh, I remember thinking I was freaking rich, <laughs> it's funny, and these two don't seem to be turning, so I don't know what the deal is with these. I have to go down underneath, which ain't no fun because the motor's all up in your business. Mess with that in a second. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and chop these lines. I also made a lot of money um, uh, shoveling driveways in the wintertime. People come home from work and uh, not be feeling like shoveling the driveway and have some dumb. 12 year old or 10 year old show up and uh, want to cut your grass for, or uh, not cut your grass, shovel your driveway for five bucks. <laughs> I bought a lot of uh, toy Hot Wheels and toy tractors down at, there's an anchor do it center down at the end of my road. I'd walk a quarter mile down there and walk around the die cast department and buy uh, whatever super cheap. Ertl brand John Deere tractors and stuff I could afford. Just good times. Okay, those two are definitely not turning. I'm gonna have to go down underneath and see what I can find. Okay, I'm back. So, where the top of these bolts are, right above the uh, intake pipe, the crossover, coming from the other side of the engine. I'm not sure which one of these I got on. That brings to mind uh, one of the next things I'm gonna have to buy, which is a uh, step. You know where to step up onto those frame rails back there. I think I'm on this one. So what I'm gonna have to do is lock it with my ratchet, go down underneath and twist this off. It's be a lot easier with two people. I wish I had my employee here right now, but it's Sunday.
Ugh. Boy, that sucks. I guess I could get my wife to help. She's not the uh, working on old cab overs kind of type. coming or not. I got some vice grips down there clamped to the nut and set where they'll hit the bottom of the doghouse here. If I hear my pliers fall in a second, I know I got there. Oh, now my wife's up here moving. probably seen enough of me doing this so I'll bring you back after I get done pulling this off all right I got the last bolt out that was not fun I got it in and out about 15 times this whole thing has been here a long time Okay, so that's done. This carpet is so nasty, it makes me want to throw up. I'll go ahead and pull this cup holder out too, real quick. One thing I can't stand is dirty interiors. I don't know, it's one of them weird things. Fortunately, this is gonna be a lot easier. There's underneath of here, there's a passageway. There's wires and lines and stuff run through there. Okay, my bolt's out of the way. If any of you know the location of a factory style driver's seat for one of these, holler at me please. I'd love to get one of those. All right, hey, look how nasty this carpet is. Just disgusting. So I'll show you where those lines are poking through the floor, where those nuts were I had to get. Which reminds me, I need to try to find my vice grips. Up here, where them wires poke through the floor. See a little yellow hole there. That's where them nuts were. Somewhere, I need to find my vice grips. I think they hit the ground. Anyways, project I'm working on right now is got to get this hydraulic uh, PTO pump out the airlines those lines from last weekend and the drive shaft unit out okay so that's the uh, unit I'm taking out in this frame mounted bracket here my new fuel tank brackets are gonna mount somewhere in here this big monstrosity has got to come out this is how you get down here. Oh man, I'm not old, but I feel old. And I don't know where they took this truck, but man, did they beat the tanks up. Huge dent on the back, on the bottom. Bottom of the air tanks hammered. But like I said, it, it tanks only. Well, that's my hand spread out. I can, with my finger on the ground and my pinky, I can touch that bleed valve on the tank tank on that size dinged um, interesting thing I found is these straps holding the uh, air tanks on 
are actually cables. You can see where they're frayed. Wouldn't have expected that. I figured they're just metal hoops. They are not, see? But anyways, so what's gonna happen is these air tanks, the black brackets they're mounted on, which I think have been off the truck because they're painted. Looks like they were off. Uh, no, I take that back. It looks like they got spray paint over spray on it. This drive shaft coming down. Yeah, crawl up here some more. Ouch. Should do this on the cement. Uh, that's the bottom of the tank. Again, huge dent in it. Just pile drive that thing into something. Surprise it don't leak. And this cross member here that braces the outer edge of the fuel tank mounts. It's a pretty substantial piece of metal. It's just freaking pretzeled. Hit that on something. The fuel crossover line is hanging six inches off the ground. But anyways, this is the transmission. That's the drive shaft I'm gonna take off. Not sure how that comes out. I think I'm just gonna for now leave that dangling. Pull this pull the shaft itself out just leave that dangling until I get the truck where I can spin this get it out of gear or just leave it I don't know all right and I can pull that off which should be easy once I get the front of the drive shaft off I'm just gonna pull the four bolts on this bracket here and drop the whole unit out pull it out of the way but I'll set you up so you can watch I think, I can't see the camera. Let's see. All right, I think it's a 9 sixteenths. See if it's loose. <laughs> no. Excellent. There she comes. Ah, there it comes. Okay. So this has a slip collar, but it's probably locked up. <clears throat> what I'll probably have to do is get a punch and drive that shaft out. Probably not gonna come on its own. All right, I'll go up top and pull that bracket off. Okay, so I gotta cut these two air lines this zip tie, take the four bolts loose, then lower that thing out of the way. Not sure how heavy it is. Probably 100, 150 pounds, something like that. Excuse me. <clears throat> Wife mode and now my allergies are messed up.
I try to keep the talking to a minimum. There's a lot of shows or YouTube channels, stuff I'd really like to watch in TV shows, but just get on there and just ramble and never shut up. Show a lot more talk and a lot less work. So I'm gonna try not to do that. About to find out how heavy or not heavy this is. Feels kind of stout. See if I get that shaft out of there. Can't tell if it's moving or not. Probably isn't. Let's see. Probably gonna have to lay down there, push on it with my foot, and tap on the shaft to get it to shove out. I'll reposition. Okay. Ain't much room under these. So, I gotta get this loosened up in here. I don't know if that's a press fit or if it's a slip fit. supposed to have a jam nut or a bolt right here through this yoke to jam it to this PTO shaft but it's missing so that might come off too and make it easier. I'm going to squirt some the peanut butter blaster on it. Probably get it in my eyes. That'd be fun. I'm almost out of peanut butter blaster. Seem like I'm always out of it. You think we eat it the way we run run out of it so fast? Okay, just give it enough to weep around it. A little bit hot today. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, we. shot but on a positive note my shaft is moving okay try, yeah. try to twist around get my foot in here where I can push on this PTO unit in my foot <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see anything. There's not much room under here. Oh, it's coming off here. Cool. <clears throat> here it comes. Hmm. Well, that ain't where I was planning on it coming apart. Missing this bolt. It's supposed to jam this to the 
to the unit there. Surprised that didn't just come out going down the road. Well, I guess it would have been going down the road. You wouldn't have been using the wet kit while driving, but you get the point. Okay, well, that looks better anyways than having a U-joint hanging here. All right, now I'm gonna get over there and drag that thing out of here. Another funny story for anybody thinking about creating a YouTube channel. There are guys out there that get real butt hurt if you're using one of these in place of one of these. I did a tractor video and I was uh, I was banging a bearing race out with this screwdriver here, which has a big hardened end on it, which works really well for knocking stuff out. And I about got crucified because I wasn't using one of these. Yes, I have about 10 of these. No, I wasn't using one. I don't really care. Okay, let's get out and drag this unit out of the way. Oh, there's my vice grips that I needed from earlier. They did in fact hit the ground. It must, it's a Christmas miracle. I need to go to the casino. I dropped something and it hit the ground. Somehow it went from the top of the motor, right above the rocker cover, all the way to the ground. That's amazing. Okay, let me try to uh, squeeze back out of here. All right, that freed up a lot of space under here. Hmm, that's what I pulled out. So here's my current dilemma. To start fitting my tanks, I need to take these brackets off. To take the brackets off, I need to take this air tank off. Um, this is the basic setup for the air tank mounts here. Air tanks just mount obviously right directly to the back of the fuel tank mounts. But I'm gonna walk back and show you the freight liner setup, how the air tanks are going to mount. I'm gonna move the air tanks from there to about right here. They're gonna be a lot higher, like here. But to do that, I've got to lengthen all these lines. These lines go down across the front, down there where I was just working. So I'm gonna have to lengthen those. I don't wanna make the truck where it's not drivable. So, I don't know if I want to pull these off now or wait. But I'll walk you back there and show you what these freight liner setup looks like so you know what I'm going to be using. Okay, so this is how the uh, exactly how the freight liner stuff that I bought mounts. This is not my tanks, but this is the uh, same kind of truck. See the tanks are real close to the frame and they tuck up under just a little. And they're flat straight across the top and the air tank brackets are these these are the ones i'm going to use the tanks are the same diameter but basically it just tucks them under the frame rail and just a little bit inboard and as you can see I mean, the top of the tank is just pretty much flush at the bottom of the frame rail so i think it'll look real nice it's basically tuck the frame or the uh, air tanks right up in into the frame up tight gives it a lot more ground clearance compared to what I've got now so I got to come back and pull these brackets off these have uh, straps that just come right around the bottom come back up over here through the top so I'll be, won't, I'll be able to get rid of those frayed cable setups on mine. Not using these tanks, probably. These are little bitty shorties. Mine are twice that long. But anyways, that's what I got to do. Okay, so I decided to come on back here and get this stuff off this truck. 
this thing, the carcass of it's about to get junk pretty quick. This belonged to my buddy that uh, passed away when I did that 350 or 379 video on. I traded out, uh, fixed the air conditioner on his truck, his uh, F350. And uh, he said I could pull some random brackets and stuff off this that I needed. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. Kinda wanna see how they're gonna, where I can put stuff on my truck anyway, so. This truck is uh, like, uh, it was an FLD 120 and uh, it was wrecked a number of years ago. Got a cat in it. I think it's a 3406. I don't know why they didn't ever pull it out of it. The truck don't have no cab or hood or anything else on it. And the motor's just sitting there without no exhaust, nothing on it. Turbo inlet's exposed. Sure, if it was good, it ain't no good now. I gotta pull this, this air tank off before I can get to the one that I need underneath it. It's blocking the bracket for the main air tanks. I wasn't planning on putting air tanks on my truck, but the ones that are on it are skinned up pretty good. I can bond them up, but I don't know. I don't know what new air tanks cost. I never priced them. Trying to save money where I can on this truck project. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be real expensive. Now I can see the tank brackets that I need. It's got more horsepower than I thought it had. That one's going to take some heat. Pull them off and worry about that later. These are steel bolts on an aluminum frame, so I don't know how well this is going to go. Well, it's not seized. This could be fun. My battery impact died. Fortunately, these are coarse thread bolts. One.
Eat my nut. All right, next. All right, we're quarter of the way there. Got some pretty good aluminum corrosion on there. I've done a lot of restoration work on uh, World War II vintage aircraft, and uh, it's freaking insane. The uh, dissimilar metal corrosion and the uh, I forget what they call it the corrosion that develops intergranular corrosion I think is what they call it in uh, aircraft aluminum or any aluminum this truck's probably got it pretty bad too the aluminum just freaking swells up and it's the weirdest thing it, you'll take basically just a piece of aluminum like this three quarter inch thick and it'll just explode out into like inch and a half thick it's just nuts all right we're just about about to come off okay. all right there's one tank Drag it over to the truck. This style ratchet's really fun until that latch mechanism quits working and they just do that whenever they want to. Then they're not fun. It's a pretty annoying feature they come built with. This side's not rusted as bad, so they should give up even easier.
I think I mentioned before, putting uh, freight liner tanks on here was not my initial goal. But uh, I priced getting uh, tanks built to match what I've already got in the truck. They were wanting like 1200 bucks before shipping. So I ain't that hung up on it. Like I said in the last video, I'm, I'm not throwing this stuff away that I take off the International. So if I come across a good set sometime, I can swap them back. In the meantime, I'm just going to get them things polished out looking like chrome and they're going to look great. Just have to trust me on that. my brain keeps messing up okay lefty loosey righty tidy All right, this kind of give you just a quick visual reference of how the tank is going to be mounted compared to that. I'm not using these tanks. It'll be those tanks or new tanks, but it'll be like this. Probably right about where these are at. And this front one will be down here somewhere. So probably this end of this tank will be somewhere in here where I can send it to the the U-joint uh, parts there, but I think it's going to be a pretty clean install right there. And it'll get easily almost a foot higher. But that's what I'm envisioning. Another thing, I want to get some different mud flaps on here. This one's kind of, it was dragging the ground when I got it, but my buddy heated up the coil here and got it back up in the air but it's crooked kind of looks dumb but this back plate is custom made i think it's pretty cool now i'll insert a picture of uh the mud flap and arms that i want to put on it All right, well, this is a little bit of a shorter video, but I um, appreciate you tagging along and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Next, we'll probably pop the uh, air tanks off, or at least the one on one side, and uh, figure out where I want to put it, mock, maybe mock up the, uh, the tanks I'm putting on it, figure out where I can put those. Obviously, I have to pull the uh, tank brackets factory take bracket brackets off of that passenger side there get them out of the way and then probably just set the jack the tanks up the new ones and figure out where i want to put them but anyways follow along i appreciate it